you know, I would have gave no telling what amount of money to be in your shoes about 20 years ago to be able to sit here and listen to some of these guys tell you, you know, how to break stuff down and ledge fishing and, and just the small details that a lot of guys and a lot of fishermen overlook is what it takes 35 years of my life to figure out that that's really what matters. And we're going to try to teach you some of the small stuff and we're going to, we're probably going to say a lot of the same small stuff from all three guys, Gerald, Jesse, me. Um, but suspended fish, that's something I had to grow up in my hometown, um, little town of Donald, South Carolina. I was very fortunate to grow up with really good lakes within probably an hour and a half of me. We got Clarks Hill, I got Hartwell, I got Lake Russell, I've got Lake Murray. Um, you know, even I don't fish it very much, but uh, right there in Atlanta, we've, we've got uh, Lake Lanier. It's really good. I want The only time I ever fished Lake Lanier, one time, is the Bassmaster Open in 2006. I want a boat, and I've never been back up there. But it fishes exactly like Lake Hartwell, and I, I really enjoy fishing those waters. But all the knowledge that I have of suspended fish and from fishing those lakes year after year, and it's, it's something, they have one thing that a lot of lakes not a lot of lakes around the world have is blueback herring. And they're starting to be introduced in different states. I think Smith Lake, Jesse's home lake, I think they have bluebacks now, but you're starting to see them more and more. Lake Norman's getting bluebacks up in North Carolina. And, and how they're getting there is really by accident. <laughs> and you don't want them if you don't have them now. Uh, striper fishermen, that's, that's where they come from. Uh, the Savannah River, obviously, had them naturally. That's what the chain of Hartwell, Russell, Clark's Hills on because the herring run up out of the ocean to spawn and when they downed them up, they trapped them. So they just, you know, kept multiplying. They're like a striper. They can live in, you know, fresh water. Um, but they can actually reproduce in fresh water unlike stripers. But when bluebacks are introduced to a, a lake, it just changes everything. They're they're not like thread fins or any other type of shad or shiners that, that you've ever had to deal with before. They are a fish in their self. Um, you have to understand what, what different conditions and different water stages and follow the seasons on them just like you do largemouth to understand what the herring do to figure out how the bass are going to relate to them. Long story short, in a nutshell, bass, basically, when you have blueback herring in your lake, they, they act as stripers. They roam 100 feet of water. They'll be suspended, you know, 15 foot down, 30 feet down. And growing up with that, I've learned how to target and catch suspended fish. Now, I'm going to throw this in there. The, the best time of the year to do this and the most consistent time of year is when the water temperature is 55 degrees and below. Love cold water. That makes the fish a lot more predictable. It makes them easier to catch. And I've taken these things that I've learned to other parts of the country where there is no blueback herring. Um, there's three ingredients that you gotta have to be able to consistently catch, consistently now, consistently catch suspended fish. Um, you gotta have the, the right water clarity and it's gotta be clear. You know, three foot visibility at a minimum because these fish are sight feeders. You know, there is nothing like, everybody knows you go out to a tournament, whether you're fishing brush piles, you're ledge fishing, you go out there the weekend before or the day before and you bust them on a place. I mean, you can't wait. You can't sleep the night before the tournament. I'm gonna win this sucker, I know I am. They load it on this hole and you go out there the next morning and you all jacked up and you start firing out there with everything you got and it ain't happening 30 minutes in, you're like, God, it happened again, man. Here we are 30 minutes into the day and your day is blown right there just because you were so excited. You knew the fish were there and you can't get a bite. So you ease up there and you see them sitting over the top or you see them suspended off the break. Now, if that water was clear, you could catch them. But if it's not, I don't care. Bassmaster Elite Series, Kevin Van Dam can't catch them fish. They just won't bite. And that's one thing I wanted to talk to you about. It's on one of my slides, but I'm just going to touch on it just for a little bit. You have to learn on your electronics. I'm not the best at elect electronics, but I'm, I know what fish I can catch and what fish I can't. And the ones you can't is very important to know what that looks like, especially when you're dealing with suspended fish. Um, a lot of times suspended fish, you won't always have 
you know, just the perfect picture of what you want to look for. But I can tell you what you don't want to see. You see, I Welcome to Bass University TV, an online video training course where you'll learn champion bass fishing techniques from pro anglers Pete Gluzek, Mike Iaconelli, and their talented special guests. From on the water to in the classroom, you'll learn sound techniques and strong fundamental bass fishing skills. Watch hours of video content on multiple topics at your own pace for a low monthly fee. Cancel at any time. Information is power in the sport of fishing. So learn from the very best. Subscribe to Bass University TV today.